Over the next few minutes, we will explain what retainage invoices are, what the workflow for entering retainage documents is, and we'll show you how to create retainage invoices. Retainage is used for work that is done in phases or milestones. Retainage is a portion of the agreed-upon contract price deliberately withheld until the work, phase, or milestone is substantially complete to assure that contractor or subcontractor will satisfy its obligations and complete a project. The process or workflow for entering retainage documents has a couple of steps. First, we post an invoice, or debit note or credit note, that specifies the holdback or retainage for the document. When this transaction is posted, the inventory or expense account is debited while the retainage control and the payable control accounts are credited. The second step happens at a later time, and it is to post a separate retainage invoice or debit or credit note for the outstanding retainage amount. This transaction debits the retainage control account and credits the payables control account. This step can be performed manually or automated by a batch creation. Let's see how to create retainage invoices. Before creating our first retainage invoice, we want to verify the retainage options in Accounts Payable Options are correct. Let's go to Accounts Payable, AP Setup, and select Options. To enter retainage invoices, the Retainage Accounting option in the Processing tab needs to be selected. Then we verify the information in the Retainage tab. The default retainage percentage is the percentage the system is going to hold back when the invoice, credit note, or debit note is created. This percentage will appear as the default when you add new vendors, but you can change the retainage or holdback percentage for particular vendors in the vendor record. The default retainage period is the number of days from the original date that you can withhold the retained amounts from vendors. The system calculates the retainage due date by adding the retention period to the original document date. The default retention period is used for new vendor records, but you can specify different ones for individual vendors. You can also change the retention period on invoices. We can select if the system will base the retainage amount on the document total after taxes or before taxes. We enter the number of days before the retainage due date that you can generate retainage documents using the Create Retainage Batch screen. For example, if you enter 7, you can generate the retainage invoice 7 days before the retainage is due. In this window, we could also select a schedule for processing the retainage invoices. After verifying all the retainage options are correct, we can create the retainage invoices. To create the invoice, go to IP Transactions and select Invoice Batch List. If creating a new batch, enter the batch description. Then enter some of the invoice details. Select the retainage option. This adds a retainage type to the invoice entry window. We enter the document number, document total, and amount. In the Retainage tab, we can see the holdback is 10%, or $108.25. And the retainage terms will be based on the due date table. In the Totals tab, we can see the document total is $1,082.50. Because the retainage amount is 108 with 25, the net payable is 974 with 25. Let's add the invoice. And then post it. The transaction has been posted and the journal entries were created in the general ledger. We go to the general ledger, GL transactions, and select batch list to see the entries. We open the batch and we can see a debit was made to inventory and credits were made to the payable control and to the retainage control accounts. Let's close the windows. The second step in the process is to post a separate retainage invoice for the outstanding retainage amount. We go back into the invoice batch list and create a brand new batch for the retainage invoice. We use July 31st, 2020 as the date. Then enter some of the invoice details. The document type should be Retainage Invoice. We enter the document number and select the original document. 
the correct values are populated. In the total tab, we can see the net payable is $108.25. Let's add the invoice and then post it. The transaction has been posted and the journal entries were created in the general ledger. We go back to the batch list in the general ledger to see the entries. We open the batch and we can see a debit was made to the retainage control account and a credit was made to the payable control account. This finishes the process of creating retainage invoices in accounts payable. You now know what retainage invoices are, what the workflow for entering retainage documents is, and how to create retainage invoices.